I'm running a new version of Firefox and the UI doesn't look terrible. Turns out it's actually really easy to fix. Here is the vanilla UI and unsurprisingly, it's a little bit controversial. Firstly, with the tabs. So around every border of the tab, there is now increased padding, including the bottom, which didn't actually have any padding before. So now it's kind of unclear whether these are supposed to be tabs or if they're supposed to be buttons. I don't know why they decided to do this. I like the way that Brave does it, where the tabs are connected to the header bar like most other browsers actually do. Another thing is with the application menu over here. So there's more padding around each of the buttons here, but the menu icons are gone. So the menu is bigger, but there is less information in it. And because of the tab padding, the header is now going to be just a little bit larger. Now, you might not think all of these changes are really that big of a deal, in which case, feel free to go and just use the new UI and be happy with it. But a lot of people out there do have an issue with it, and because of that, there's actually a couple of really simple fixes we can actually go and do. I don't use Firefox that often, but when I found out about these fixes, I went and set them up straight away. The first fix we can do is very much temporary, but it is going to be the easiest fix and it will give you the old UI exactly how it was. So if we go into the about config, this is where we can go and configure Firefox through some variables. It will prompt you to actually confirm you want to do this. Let's go and do that. And in here, what we're going to search for is browser.proton. Now, you'll notice there's a couple of things enabled in here. We have the context menus, door hangers, proton just in general, and also modals. What we're going to do is just disable all of those. You can do that by hitting the icon on the right-hand side here, which will flip the true value over to being false. And as you notice, once we disabled this one, the UI basically went to exactly how it was before. If we go over to this one again, as you'll see, we don't actually have icons here. That's the one thing that doing this doesn't actually fix. I don't know why. It's really dumb. But I also said this was a temporary fix. The reason why this is temporary is because in the newer versions of Firefox, in the nightly builds, these options have actually been removed. I don't know why Mozilla removed them and just didn't give you the option to go and swap back whenever you want. Maybe because they would have to go and maintain both versions of the UI and they want you to use the newer one, but that solution isn't going to work into the future. Now, if you don't hate the floating sort of tabs, you just want to make them smaller, we actually can go and address that. If we go and right click on the toolbar and go to customize toolbar, we can actually change the toolbar density. Now, one of these options here is actually going to be missing for you. You're not going to have the compact option because compact was actually removed from the UI in the latest version. What we're going to need to do is go back to about config and we're going to go and re-enable another option. If we go into here and search for UI density, what you're going to do is set this value from being zero back to being one. And then once you've changed it once, the option will start to appear inside of your menu. This I consider to be far better than what we have in the newer version. But sadly, this is also going to be temporary because Compact UI is being considered for removal. Unlike the Proton options, UI density is still there in the nightly builds, so you can keep using it for the relative foreseeable future, but it may just suddenly be removed in some later update. So what we need to do instead is just go and modify the browser's CSS. I'm going to show you two really awesome fixes. The first one is the one I used at the start of the video. This is known as Lepton, previously known as Proton Fix. Now, this is basically a complete remake of the old Photon UI, but done in user Chrome CSS and user content CSS. Now, the developer says that Proton's overall feel is good, but there are a few things I didn't like and wanted to improve. Now, I'm not really sure what else he left there, because the only things I've been able to find is there's like a kind of Firefox colored line inside of the application menu and the sound icon in the tab. Everything else seems to be back to the way it used to be. This is the one that I prefer using, and I would highly recommend using it yourself. Now, if you don't hate the new Proton UI, but you want it to be a little bit more tamed, you like the general idea of the floating tabs, you just don't like the idea that there is so much extra padding. Maybe try out a Technetium? Technetium? I'm not sure how to actually say the name, but this is basically how it looks. It brings the icons back, which is absolutely good in my books. I still have no idea why those were actually removed, 
and I feel like the padding is actually workable now. If this is how the new Proton redesign actually looked from the start, I don't think anyone would have really complained. I like to consider this one to basically be Proton Light. This one also does happen to be based on Lepton. Now that we've looked at both of them, let's actually get one of them installed. The way we install it is going to be exactly the same for both of them because they are both using your user JS, your user Chrome CSS, and your user content CSS, and I believe they both offer zip files if you don't know how to use Git. So from Technetium, you can get it right here, and over on Lepton, you can get it right here. But I am going to use Git instead. Basically, what we're going to be doing is taking those three files and then sticking them inside of our Firefox's Chrome directory. So there's a couple of ways that we can get here. If we go into the About Support page inside of Firefox, and then we go down to the section where it says Profile Directory, that is going to take you directly to it. The other way you can do it is just navigate in there with your file manager. So that's going to be located if you're on Linux inside of your Mozilla directory, inside of your Firefox directory, and then inside of the one that has this really long name that's going to be like a bunch of random symbols. Inside of that, we're then going to go into the Chrome directory, and this is where we need to be. Just go ahead and dump all three of those files inside of the Chrome directory, and you're basically going to be good to go. Now, there is one thing you should go and do just to make sure it is loading up the correct version. Inside of this About Support page, you'll see a clear startup cache button. Go and click that, and what it's going to do is go and reload the user Chrome CSS, the user content CSS, and the user JS that it's actually using. Generally, you don't have to do that and it will actually pick up the new version, but sometimes it is going to be needed. Right now, we are running in compact mode, so if we go back into here, set it back to normal mode, this is what I was using at the start of the video. While Lepton isn't intended to be a perfect recreation of the old Photon UI, it does fix all of the problems I've seen people list out. But maybe none of these are going to be the exact fix you want, and maybe you want to go and write your own CSS. Now, because of the user JS that we're using, it has gone and enabled the setting we actually need, but we can actually go and write our own user Chrome CSS and our own user content CSS. What you're going to need to do if you don't have that user JS from either of those themes we were just using is go into your about config and we're going to go and enable one very simple option. What we're going to do is enable a legacy option known as legacy user profile customization style sheet. Once this is enabled, then we'll be able to go and use those CSS files. Now I could spend an entire video just talking about user Chrome CSS. That's not going to be today though, so for now I'm just going to send you to a couple of very useful resources. The first one you can go to is userchrome.org. Basically, this is just a gathering place for all of the information about how to style Firefox. It'll have documentation, examples of things you can do, it'll have links to other very useful resources, and if anything changes with the way that User Chrome CSS actually works, it's probably going to be listed on this page. For example, when 20 updates ago, it was disabled by default. Another really useful place is this GitHub repo right here. If you want some pre-made tweaks, you can just go and download and add straight into your own files. This is a really useful place to come to, and it even breaks it down into different versions of the Firefox UI. Another really useful GitHub repo is this one right here. Basically the exact same thing, but this one seems to have a lot more tweaks you can use. And if you ever need any support, I highly, highly recommend going over to Firefox CSS over on Reddit. I know I don't usually give Reddit any sort of good promotion, but I feel like this subreddit actually is incredibly useful. So let me know, do you like the new Proton UI and think that people complaining about it are just making a big deal out of nothing? Or is this change so massive, it makes you hate Firefox now and want to use a different browser? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That's going to be pretty much everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan David, Carl Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter D, Stephen T, through Tony Dushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go on support work, the links down below is my Patreon, Subscribestar, Libre, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel where I live stream twice a week. And I also upload YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me and I'm out.